Here is a little preview of the mandala we're going to be painting today. I absolutely love this mandala. I think it's one of my favorites that I've done on YouTube so far. I used a combination of some olive greens and some dusty mauve pinks and gold. Yes, yeah, so if you enjoy this tutorial, please do me a huge favor. Um, please like this video, share it if possible, and if you don't already, please subscribe to my channel. All right, that's all I have for you guys today. Let's jump in. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we are gonna be painting on a little bit of a larger surface. This is a 10 inch wood board that I got from Amazon. So I typically um, paint on about eight inch wood boards that I also got from Amazon. And these ones are a little bit thicker than those ones. So I am happy about that. They seem like a decent quality. So all of the tools that I'm gonna show you are in my Amazon shop. And I will leave a link in the description that you guys can click on, or you can find that by going to my website, which is thoughtfuldots.com. And then just click on the tools I use tab, and that will take you directly to my Amazon shop. So. These can be found there, and I've already painted this black using Folk Art Multi-Surface Satin in pure black. I will be using these nail stylus tools. Unfortunately, there's not standardized sizes across different manufacturers for stylus tools, so they come in all different colors, all different sizes. So. I will leave a link in the description for a photo that will show you my specific tool sizes and then you can use that to convert to whatever set that you're using. Then I'll be using these dotting rods by Happy Dotting Company which do have the millimeter size right on the handle so I will be showing you those. I will probably be using a couple brushes to do some brush strokes and these are us art supply number one and two over zero so just a little bit of shorter thinner brushes i will be drawing on our guide marks using this brassarth white charcoal pencil i've really been loving this lately it wipes off super easy at the end so definitely recommend the charcoal pencil and I'll be using this compass. And then I typically, in almost all of my tutorials, use a 16 point mandala stencil. I do that so that you guys don't have to have all these different size stencils. However, the set that I have linked in my Amazon shop, which is I'm sure I'm sure that's the one that you guys are purchasing is the set that I have in my Amazon shop. So if you guys are buying that, then you already have the 16 point and then you already have the 12 as well. So most of you probably have the 12. If not, um, if you are following my tutorials regularly, it might be worth it to get the set of mandala stencils that has the 16 point as well as the 12 because I want to start incorporating more um, 12 point mandalas. So I'll be using that to draw guide marks. And then I'll just go through the colors real quick. I am doing kind of a succulent inspired palette today. So greens and some purple and a little bit of pink. So I have Hauser medium green desert cactus. So just a little bit of a darker and then a lighter green. And then this really beautiful frosted plum. Some French mauve. And some petal pink. So really pretty palette. I'm really excited to use this today. Um, I may incorporate some gold. I have mine in this little jar. This is Glorious Gold by Deco Art. And then I'll probably use some Nouveau Drops. 
I don't know for sure if I will, but if I do, I have this mustard gold and then also this like heritage rose, which is really pretty. And then there's also this antique rose that would go with this palette. So I'll just have these on hand. I may or may not use them. Okay, and I think that is all. I will be using a palette today, a little paint palette. But we can dive in. I first need to find the center of this and I just kind of eyeball. So I am just eyeballing making sure the spacing is all pretty similar on each side. I'm just gonna make a little dot. And this is just a guesstimate, it's like an approximate. And then what I do is I take my compass and I put it over that dot I just made, pull the white pencil all the way out to the edge, just making a little mark and then I flip it over and we want it to land on the same place so it's just a little bit too far this way. So I'm just adjusting a tiny bit. Now we are even on both sides. Then I'm just going the opposite direction over here. And that's pretty spot on. So I am just going to check this all the way around. Actually, move it a tiny bit. So you just want to make sure that it's hitting at the same spot. And then I'm just dragging mine. It's not perfect, but it'll do. So I'm just wiping off that mark I made so that we don't have to. And then there's our center. I'm just gonna take the pencil out. We're gonna do our vertical guide marks first. So just put it in the center. I'd like to hold it down. And then we will just start drawing those vertical, oops. Okay, so now we have our vertical guide marks. I am gonna use a ruler and I'm just going to extend them out. I'm just gonna sharpen my pencil real quick and my electric sharpener. I've had a lot better luck using an electric sharpener than just like the manual ones. When I use the manual ones, it always breaks my pencil, like just eats it up. So the electric has been a lot better. It doesn't just crumble. Okay, so I'm just lining these up and I'm just going to extend the guide marks. And this is the same method that I use for my super large mandalas as well. I just use a longer ruler to extend them out, but same exact process. Okay, and I'm just gonna pop this back on and just line it up on one of those guide marks. 
and I'm just going to draw one set of horizontal circular guide marks. I prefer to do it this way because one, just going and drawing all those little lines t is kind of time consuming, but then also I don't like all the gaps in between each circle. I like it to be a solid circle. And using the compass, I can add more guide marks. So there's just more flexibility doing it this way. But for the sake of the tutorial and measurements, this I just went and did one set and then we will extend those outward. So I like to push my compass. I make a pretty good hole so that it's not moving around. And so we're just going on that first line and making a circle. And then we're gonna bring it out to that second line. So when following these tutorials, the vertical, the 12 vertical guide marks are going to be the most important when it comes to getting your pattern um, similar to mine. These ones are still very helpful, the um, circular ones, but they're not necessarily as important as the vertical ones when it comes to copying a pattern. These circle ones more so just help us keep all of our petals and designs the same height. Um, but yeah, they don't have to be exactly the same as mine. We're just kind of eyeballing here. So now I'm eyeballing, kind of just trying to get the same distance that we've been doing for these last few. And do one more. And now I'm gonna go back through each one, just aiming for the center. And we are basically just doubling the amount of guide marks that we have. It's okay if it's not exactly in the center, we're just doing our best. So for my tutorials, especially these like real time, longer ones, I won't do a ton of editing. I just want to show you more of the full process. I don't really like to add music. I feel like it can be distracting. Um, so I just keep it really simple. I know some of you appreciate that. Some of you might prefer music, but I just like to let people know because there's points in the video where it might just be quiet, but that's okay. I feel like we live in such a busy world that a lot of us are uncomfortable when things are quiet, but it's actually really good for our minds. And especially doing this type of art, it's very calming and meditative. So I think we should just take advantage of that and try to relax a little. Okay, so we are done with our guide marks and now we're gonna start with our center dot. So I'm just kind of thinking how I want this to go. If I wanna start with one set of colors like pink and then maybe go to green or if we want to just use all of them kind of combined together. I think I want to do all of them combined together, but I am going to start with the frosted plum, just mixing it up. Such a pretty color. Okay. For the center, I like to use a larger tool. I'm going to use the size 13 dotting rod. 
I'm just gonna get a paper towel ready to wipe my tool off. Okay, for the center dot, you really want a lot of paint on your tool, so I dip mine in there pretty good. And then when you lift up, I always look underneath and I just wanna make sure there's a big mound because we want a lot of paint for the center. That will help um, keep it nice and more circular. So just going right over that center. And as you can see, there's some ripples. So we just need to get some more paint. And just kind of hover back over the top. And I'm going to go for the gold next. <clears throat> I'm going to use the small end of the pink tool. And these are just teeny tiny dots. And we are just going to start our first row. So the larger wood pieces that I paint, um, my large pieces I get from Brenna Bath on Etsy. I get the wood from her and they're really smooth. So I never really have to do like a primer or gesso or anything. It's just not necessary on those ones. But these little ones, I can see there's some, um, it's just more textured. The wood is more textured. And even this first ring of dots, I'm just noticing the divots in it, which is totally fine. Like we can work with that. But if that is an issue for you, then you could do a layer of gesso first before the black, just to prime it and kind of smooth out. Just really smooth it out. But I'm just gonna work with this. So throughout painting, you'll see me do tapping motions. Basically, when you tap your tool down, it's unloading more paint and therefore making the dot bigger. So I do that a lot and I feel like it just gives me more control over the size of the dot because I can kind of build it out to the size that I want. So just keep that in mind because that does make the dots slightly bigger. Okay, so we have our first row of gold dots. I'm just wiping off the tool. And next I am going to go in with the desert cactus. These colors are so pretty together. <clears throat> Very mystical. Reminds me of like fairy garden. Okay, so I'm gonna use the larger end of the pink tool. And we are just gonna go in between each dot from the previous row.
Okay, so there's our second row. Next, I'm going to do the petal pink. Actually, that's like a really bright pink, so I think I'll use that more as kind of like an accent. So I'm gonna do the French mauve. That looks a little bit thicker. You can see there's like more shape to it compared to these. I'm gonna try it, but I might need to thin that out a little bit. So I'm gonna use the small end of the pink tool again. Yeah, this um, consistency is a little bit different than the other deco arts, so I can tell it's a little bit sticky too. Okay, and I'm gonna do another row. This dot right here, it looks a little small. So I'm just gonna make it a little bit bigger. I think that will help a little bit. And then there's a little bit of a gap right there. So I just like to make the dots just a tiny bit bigger towards that gap. And that just helps kind of disguise it a little bit. Okay, we are gonna do one last row using the Hauser Medium Green. I'm gonna go up a size to the large end of the white tool. And again, just going in between each dot from the previous row. Sometimes I go in between, sometimes I don't. It kind of just depends on how I'm feeling. So these are all pretty muted colors, but that pink is like the lightest and brightest color in the palette. So I wanna be careful about where I use that because that's where the attention will be drawn. So I think I'll use that more as like an accent color. Because if I use too much of it, then the piece will turn out really pink and bright. And I want it to be a little more subtle. Okay, so it's kind of a tight squeeze there, so those dots are a little bit smaller. I'm just gonna see if I can make this one a little bit bigger. That's not bad. Okay, so now 
just thinking. what I want to do next. It's always tricky to know where you want to go next with a pattern. Okay. I think I'm going to do like a cross. Well, I don't know. I want to do some swooshes. That's what I want to do. So I'm going to do every other guide mark. I'm going to do a swoosh. So I'm going to go back to the frosted plum. And I'm going to do this second guide mark here. And I like to start my dots below the guide mark. So I'm dotting with the large end of the green tool. So I'm just kind of looking at the spacing because I'm going to do a couple more swooshes, but then there's going to be a gap there. So we might want to do a swoosh on every guide mark to better fill in that spacing. So that's what we use the circular guide marks for to make sure that everything is the same height. So all of these dots are starting right below the same guide mark and that will make sure that they're all the same height. So now I'm going to, I'm gonna do this French mauve color. So I'm making a dot on both sides and then dragging down. And then we're just gonna do the same. looking like flower. Cute. I'm just going to wipe my tool off because the paint is getting a little bit, it's building up on the end here.
cute. So in that little gap right there, I'm going to use the Nouveau Drops. So I'm going to use the Mustard Gold. If you don't have Nouveau Drops, you can just use a dotting tool. So probably like large side of the blue tool and your gold and just make a little dot there. But I'm going to use the Nouveau Drops. If you're not familiar with Nouveau Drops, I use them very often and they are just kind of like this 3D paint, so it makes raised dots. I love them. I love texture. Pretty, pretty. So you can see they're just kind of like raised up and they stay that way when they dry. Okay, I love this color palette. It's so pretty. Okay, now One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so I'm gonna take the darker green color and the size six tool. And I'm just gonna make a dot on every other guide mark. So now we have six dots. And I'm going to take the small end of the pink tool and the gold. I like to twirl it around in there. I get a good amount of paint on my tools when I use them. Okay, that's actually really small. So I'm gonna switch over to the larger end of the pink tool. That's better. And we're just walking the dots down. So I'm starting the dot a little bit higher, which is leaving a little bit of a gap between the green dot and the gold dot, and that just creates more of a peak instead of rounded. And then I just walk the dots down right next to the green. So just starting that first dot a little bit higher will create more of a peak in the petal. I'm just gonna make this peak dot just a little bit bigger. There we go. And each gold dot is starting on the same guide mark. And that is just making sure that everything is the same height. Okay. 
Okay. Okay, next I think I'll incorporate that pink now. So the petal pink and the large end of the white tool. And same thing, we're just starting it up slightly higher. And now I know that the first pink dot is gonna be right below this guide mark, so I'm gonna do that the same all the way around, just to make sure everything's the same height. I am just loving these colors. I have never used these colors together and they are so pretty. So pretty. Okay, and now I'm going to I will go up a size to the large end of the blue tool. And I'm gonna take the Desert Cactus, oops, Desert Cactus color. Just walking the dots again. So like I said, on that first row of walking the dots, if you do the dot higher, it's gonna create more of that peak. So now you can see our pattern has a nice peak. If you don't do that, then it will be more rounded, which is still pretty, but it's just a different look. So these ones are nice and like, extended, elongated, and have that nice point at the tip. And these green dots are all starting right below the same guide mark so that we can make sure that they're all the same height. Okay, and I'm just gonna keep going. Um, okay, we will do same tool, the large end of the blue tool and the French mauve. Okay, that paint is like just so thick. I'm gonna add just a drop of water and see if that helps. It kind of just seems like old paint. That helped a lot. So we will just try that. It's still a little sticky, so just gotta be careful. So I'm gonna make a big dot. Actually, I think I'll go all the way around and do a big dot. Right at the tip. And I actually need some more, so I'm going to Yeah, 
that's just so thick for some reason. But it's okay. We can work with it. It's overall a different um, paint consistency on that color. The other Deco Arts are really smooth, but this one it has like a sticky, thicker consistency for some reason. Um, but we could still work with it. Okay, and we are just going to walk those dots down. I, I've mentioned this in some like Q&A's and stuff before, but I am definitely more introverted. So small talk is like really hard for me. So I hope you guys are okay with the silence. I would more so rather like if I don't have something to say, I would rather there be silence than to try to like force conversation. That's just how I am in general in life. That's why I really like the um, Patreon live streams that I do each week because people get to be there live while I'm painting the tutorial and they get to ask questions. So then I just end up chit-chatting with them and that's fun. But just thinking of things to say off the top of my head, I'm not the best at, so. Sometimes we'll just have to enjoy the silence. I really love this palette. And I'm, I'm going to be doing brush strokes on this one. You guys know I really love my brush strokes, but I also wanted to make sure to incorporate a lot of dots in this one as well because dots just have such a stunning effect. So I think I wanna do one more set of walking the dots. I'm gonna go up in size to the large end of the green tool. This is the largest tool in my set. And we are gonna do the Hauser medium green. And I need some more of that. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do the large dot. I'm just gonna wipe off the tool. And I'm gonna use the large end of the green tool again. And we are just going to walk the dots. Okay, next I'm going to do a brush stroke. And we could have done less dots and 
two brush strokes, but I wanted more dots. So I'm just gonna do more dots and then just one brush stroke. So I'm going to take this number one brush and just get it wet. Wanna make sure it's nice and saturated and then I just try it off. And I'm going to use the Frosted Plum. I just wanna make sure there's a good amount in this palette. And I'm not pushing down super hard because I want to keep these on the thinner side. So the more pressure you put, the thicker the brush strokes will be. So I am just going pretty lightly. And I'm just making sure to end each brush stroke on the same guide mark. Just a very delicate feminine pattern. Okay, so I'm just rinsing off my brush, getting some water. Okay, and then let me just think. We're gonna do some swooshes. I'm gonna do like a little lotus pattern in this area. But let's see here. I'm gonna grab the gold. That's a little chunky, but I'm using the large end of the green tool and I'm looking at this guide mark where all of the petals end. I'm just gonna go down one guide mark, make a dot. gold paint. I put it in this um, container because I use it very often. Um, but I've used it that specific batch for a while so it's a little bit chunky. Okay so now we have our dots and then I'm going to take the large end of the white tool and the same gold. And we are just gonna go right below that dot that we just made. And we are going to dot and swoosh down. So it looks like a little, the letter I.
Okay, next I am going to, I will use the pink. So I'm gonna use the large end of the white tool and the petal pink. And I'm gonna make a dot right at the tip of the larger gold dot that we just made. So if your colors, because this is a little bit larger, if your colors in your palette start to dry out, it's okay to add just like a drop or two of water. We're not trying to change the consistency of it. We just want to moisten it up a little bit. So just a drop of water is totally fine. Okay, now I'm flipping over this tool to use the small end of the white tool. And we are just going to dot and drag alongside that um, gold dot. So we are just going to start building out this little pretty lotus flower pattern. Okay, so just wiping off the tool. So I think I'll use that same size and just thinking of the colors and what order we wanna go. We're probably gonna be able to fit a lot of swooshes there. So I'm gonna go for the darker green so large end of the white tool. And then these pink dots started on this guide mark. So the next ones are gonna start right below there as well. And we're just making a swoosh. Mine aren't actually touching. They're not touching the green and the pink. So I'm just leaving a little bit of a gap. And as you can see, it's starting to look like a blooming flower. wiping off the tool. So as we go out, they're gonna be getting a little bit longer and longer, so we may need to go up in size. Um, we'll do the large end of the white tool. Um, let's go to the frosted plum color. So large end of the white tool and I'm going to do them the same length again. So starting at the same guide mark and coming down. Okay, so now I'm just trying to calculate the spacing here and see how much space we have. I'm also trying to figure out if I want to continue using the um, 
dotting tool or if I want to move to a brush. I think I want to move to a brush. So I'm going to use this number one. And that'll also kind of show you the difference in shape. But if you don't have a brush, then you can just keep using a dotting tool. So now I'm going to use the... I'm going to use the lighter green and we're actually going to stay on that same guide mark. So I'm just putting more pressure and then letting up on the pressure towards the tip. Okay. And for the last one, I'm just kind of thinking of the shape that I want. I kind of want it to curve a little bit. Or not. I'm trying to just decide. I think the curve, I was thinking of like curving it downward, but that will take away kind of the lotus look. So I think I want to keep the lotus look. So I'm going to use the French mauve. And I'm starting on the same guide mark, so it's going to be the same. Trying to decide if I like that, hold on. It works. Pretty, pretty. Okay, so for the next part, we are gonna do some more lotus flowers, but just a little bit differently. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm just kind of looking at the amount of space we have from here to here. So I'm just thinking of how to best um, finish the pattern. So I'm gonna do like a smaller lotus pattern that will take up a little bit a smaller amount of space and then we can do like a regular petal pattern to finish it so it's hard to explain um, but I'll just kind of show you as we go so let's see here I'm gonna use the size 6 dotting rod and the gold and I'm going to make a dot on every vertical guide mark. So there will be 12 of these. Okay. 
Okay, I'm just gonna wipe off my tool. And this whole pattern that we're doing right now is gonna be all gold. So I'm taking the large end of the pink tool I'm just going to make a dot and then walk the dots So I'm just going to take the large end of the pink tool that we just used and I'm going to do some swooshes. And I'm starting the swooshes on the same guide mark that we started the tip of the petal. And then we're going to do that all over again. So same size tool. We are going to make these ones slightly shorter. And just right up against the last swoosh, but it's not touching it. Just kind of think of that lotus flower pattern and how the petals kind of bloom. So that is what we are doing here is making that lotus flower pattern. Okay, and we are gonna do it again. But as you can see, it starts to look like little blooming lotus flowers. Okay, so next one, slightly shorter. Okay, and then we will do one last one. And these ones will be kind of almost like straight. Kind of. Eh, they're still curved, but they're just a little bit shorter. So just small like that. That looks really pretty. Okay, so now 
I'm just gonna do a little swoosh pattern right in here. Let me test it out and see how it looks. Okay, that looks good. So we will just do that all the way around. So just right in between those two patterns, there's not a guide mark there. So I'm just eyeballing. And we're starting these swooshes right below that guide mark. And then this whole pattern is all lined up right below that guide mark and that will set us up for the next pattern. Okay. That looks really pretty, very ornate. I love gold. It's one of my favorite colors, if that's even considered a color, but it's my favorite color. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the final pattern. I'm gonna use this size seven and a half. And I'm gonna use the Frosted Plum, which is very dried out by now. So I'm just gonna add a drop of water and moisten that up a little bit. And we are just going to dot on every guide mark. If you guys are enjoying this video so far, please be sure to hit the thumbs up button. That really helps me out a lot. Helps my channel and YouTube grow and helps more people see my videos. So please do so if you get a moment. Okay, so now we have our 12 dots. And I'm gonna do gold again. And the little, I'm going to use the large end of the pink tool. And we are just going to walk the dots. Okay. So I'm gonna finish off with a good amount of brush strokes. So let's see here. 
I'm going to use the dark green next. That's also getting dry, so I'm just going to add a little drop of water. Okay, so I'm using the large end of the white tool and we are going to make a dot right at the tip. And I'm keeping them all right underneath the same guide mark so that they're all the same height. To use a brush for the next part so I'm gonna use this two over zero US art supply so just a smaller uh, thinner shorter brush so I just got it wet and now I'm wiping it off and we are gonna take that green if you don't have a brush or don't want to use a brush then you can just use the dotting tool for this part We are just going to do some brush stroke swoops. So I am pushing down, applying more pressure at the base, and then as we get towards the bottom, I'm just lightening up on that pressure to bring it to a point or a taper. If you guys need more help with brush strokes, I do have a whole course that I created focused all on brush strokes. And it compares a bunch of different brushes and goes through paint consistency, pressure, hand placement, all that good stuff. So if you still struggle with brush strokes, I definitely recommend that course. Um, I will link that in the description of the video. All of my workshops, my online courses and workshops can be found by going to my website, which is thoughtfulthoughts.com and then click on the workshops tab and that will take you right to it. Okay, I'm going to add more pink. And as we get towards the outside, Um, we want to bring this pattern all the way to the edge here. And it's just kind of tricky spacing. Um, let me just think. Huh. I'm just going to start with, well, let's just do one, two, three. And that doesn't bring us all the way out to the edge, but close enough. So I'm using the large end of the blue tool and just making three large dots. 
right at the tip of the petal that we just made. All right, we are gonna use that same brush, the two over zero, and we are gonna do the same thing. So we are just going to make some swooshes right along. And I'm gonna move this up because I need somewhere to rest my wrist. So we are just going right along the green I want to get close to it without actually touching it. So pushing down and doing more pressure and then lightening up towards the tip to give us that nice point. rinsing my brush off and let's think here so I think I want to do brush stroke that starts at the bottom and comes up. I don't know though. Maybe not actually. Um, what color should we do next? I want to do the cactus, desert cactus. So these colors are all starting to dry out now. So I'm just starting to pour more. Okay, I'm gonna use that same brush, two over zero, and the desert cactus, and I'm gonna start on this guide mark here, so just slightly shorter than the pink one. And again, I'm gonna move this up because I need somewhere to rest my wrist. Okay, I'm rinsing that off, and then let's see how this paint is doing. That's really dry. So I'm just gonna start a new one for the French mauve. Okay, and we're gonna do one last set of brush strokes. So using the French mauve color. And these ones are just going to be slightly shorter. So if you have a guide mark that's slightly shorter than the green one, then just pick that one and make them all the same length. This is the same brush. Okay, 
Okay, I'm just rinsing off the brush. And then I'm just kind of thinking, that looks so pretty, about what color I want to do next. I'm gonna do the darker frosted plum. And I'm gonna take the large end of the green tool and we are gonna do some swooshes. So right in between, and we're gonna drag this down right in between those two brush strokes. This wood has a little hole right there, so it's kind of tricky. Um, do we want to do one more? Okay, so we're going to do that all the way around. Okay, we are almost done. Now I'm going to add some little gold details. So I'll use, let's see. I'll use the large end of the green tool and the gold. And we are just going, I want this to be a little bigger. Let's use the large end of the white tool. And we are just going to start on either side of the um, plum swooshes that we just made. And just walk the dots until the paint runs out on your tool. So right at that three dots is where we're going to stop. Okay, and I'm just gonna go in with some Nuvo Drops. So this is Heritage Rose. If you don't have this, you can just use gold or whatever color you wanna use for top dots. OK, 
Okay, and then I'm going to get the mustard gold and go right over these ones just to give them some dimension. Okay, and I'm just going to do this antique rose. Just a small one right in the center of these plum. Then if you wanted to, you could put something right there, but I'm not going to. I think that black space looks fine. And we are finished. This is probably one of my favorites that I've done on YouTube so far. I absolutely love it. So I'm gonna let this all dry for a couple hours and then I'll come back and wipe off the guide marks and then after that, I will kind of walk you through the varnishing process. After just looking at this for a sec, I want to add just a couple more things. So I'm taking my brush. This is the one, and then I'm just lightly tapping it into the gold. And I just want to go right through the center of these plum, just right at the base coming about halfway up and that's just a little bit, it's gonna give it a little bit of a highlight. We don't wanna cover it, we just want to go right through the center. Gold is a great color for doing these like top, top little swooshes, brush strokes. And then I'm just gonna do that same thing right through these guys here. Okay. Now we will let this dry. Okay, so this is now dried. So I'm going to take a Pampers wet wipe or you can use just the wet cloth, whichever you prefer. And this wood, like I mentioned before, is a little bit on the rough side. 
So I'm just gonna do some of these little motions because I can feel that um, the wood is just rough. So this Pampers is going to stick to it a little bit. The big pieces of wood from Brenna Bath that I normally paint on are really smooth. So when it comes to this part, I don't have any issues with the Pampers sticking, but yeah, on the rough wood that will happen. So just small little motions will help that. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I did go back and just add a lighter pink dot in the center just to brighten it up a little bit. Okay, and I'm just gonna take this black cloth and just kind of loosen up some of the little pampers, hairs, fibers. Kind of got stuck in some of that wood, so I'm just getting off any of those little fibers before we varnish. Okay, and I'm gonna be taking this outside to varnish so I'll just show you what I'll be using. I'm gonna use this Krylon Satin Finish and I'm going to use two coats of this. So I'll do one coat, let it dry for about uh, five to 10 minutes and then I'll do a second coat and then we'll be done and I will show you guys the final result. And here is what it looks like with the two coats of satin varnish. So beautiful. If you guys end up using this tutorial, please tag me on social media. I love seeing what you guys create. And if you are looking for more tutorials, I do recommend checking out my Patreon. I will leave a link in the description of the video below. And I do live stream painting on Patreon every um, weekend. So I'll leave that info below and we will see you guys next time.